He's hoping that will give him superpowers. Today's meeting is brought to you from sunny San Diego without the protection of the clouds. And, uh, I, uh, hopefully I don't give myself permanent vision damage. Um, that's my hope. Um, all right. Thanks, guys, for joining. Um, got uh, lots going on. Let me start off at the top uh, talking about a couple things. Um, we have uh, had many people um, mentioning the uh, NeuroKernel project in the same breath as the OpenWorm project, plus um, uh, Porig and myself actually got to meet uh, Oral Lazar, who uh, is the current person uh, coordinating it and speaking about it. So we decided to reach out and uh, actually bring these two communities together for a chat and a discussion. Um, and uh, that's uh, going to be set up as a Hangout on the 29th of October. This is on the official OpenWorm calendar. Um, anybody's welcome to join. And, and um, uh, if you need uh, more references to that, well, I think uh, we'll create the official Google Plus event if it's not already created um, so that folks can join. And we will do it as a public Hangout um, so that folks who can't join will be able to see it. And just generally, yeah, get some build, start building some community around these two things. I think they have some interesting things that are complementary. Um, Oral uh, was uh, had a lot of nice things to say about us as well in, in Open Worm, so I think it, it's a really nice opportunity for us to um, uh, figure out how to build community and join forces and, and whatnot. Um, I think they're really two awesome complementary approaches. So, um, so look forward to that. Um, I think I updated on this last time. It was just sort of hot off the press, but um, we actually put it out on social media in the last two weeks about the perspectives article, the proofs. Uh, so that there's just a provisional PDF up now that everybody can read, but the proofs are uh, making their way through uh, as well. Um, it's, it's still accepted, but it's just uh, formatting that they're working on now. Um, so that'll be out, and it'll be a nicely printed, printable PDF uh, that will come out. Um, also, um, Andre and Sergey uh, put the finishing touches on the SPH paper in the LaTeX form. Um, and we are uh, having one more conversation about if we actually want to send it to the journal we targeted or send it to a, a different journal uh, with potentially different impact factor. So that is also um, is also something that we're doing. And uh, and then uh, we've also been having additional conversations about this uh, modeling decision making circuit issue. Um, several updates are kind of coming in around that. I'll let Borg talk about his part. But uh, things related to uh, sort of gap junctions being implemented is, is relevant to this. Um, we've also had some folks that are helping us look a little bit more closely at the connectome as we've had it um, uh, given to us and um, finding some uh, inconsistencies between a few different versions of the connectome. It's actually very helpful. Uh, things you notice once you start uh, really going in and, and crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's um, to make like a little simple circuit. Um, so I see that things related to sort of social um, are working their way as well into uh, the C302, but um, um, that's just something that I've been involved in here um, in pushing that forward. And then we are um, going to um, uh, have some folks meeting up um, before we meet again, I guess, um, in London at UCL. Um, I have not actually been the main person coordinating this. I, I leave that to... Uh, Giovanni and uh, Porig, who have been um, really doing an awesome, awesome job putting that together. Um, I think we'll, I'm not sure if Giovanni's going to stop by and provide an update on that uh, later today, but um, if not, maybe uh, Porig can say some things about it as well. And, um, and uh, but that's kind of an exciting thing. Um, we will be having some public events in London that are associated with that. Um, so if you're watching and you want to know how to kind of hang out, if you're going to be in the London area um, in the uh, 4th to 6th, uh, time frame. I think uh, probably closer to the end will be more of sort of the, the, the most sort of public and open. You should come by, get some drinks. We'll be posting all this on, on social media. But I think there's going to be quite a few folks in the London area um, who might be interested. So we're going to get, get some sense of that here coming up real soon. So I'm really excited uh, for that event and uh, kind of continue to grow the community. Okay. Um, so I will now be quiet. I always have too much to say. Um, we'll Actually, skip over Giovanni. Yes, go ahead. You want to speak? You want to you speak on that? Do, do you have any update on um, uh, Pi Open Worm and how? I don't. The last two weeks. No, the last two weeks have been. I can tell you. Well, I can. I can tell you my. Here. I can, I can 
can tell you that I have not done any development on it in the last two weeks. Um, I know that Mark uh, Mark Watts, who has been the uh, student on it, um, does have to turn his attention to other things. Um, issues were updated, I think, three weeks ago or uh, four weeks ago to kind of explain the current state of things. Um, it's still not ready for release to master. Um, it is one of the things that I'm looking forward to having an opportunity to push on when we are together. Um, in terms of like hacking time, this will be the first thing that I'm hacking on um, to make it to go forward. I, I am viewing it as my responsibility to push it to master, so I'm, I'm taking that on myself, so I blame, I blame no one else but me. Mark did a, did a fine job. Um, we just um, need to make sure that we press the project, and that's my that's my responsibility. So yeah, I've just uh, I just haven't been able to to turn my attention to, to moving it, but it is still on my queue. It is not in any way forgotten, um, but uh, I still wouldn't recommend folks use uh, Alpha. There's um, we drilled in a little bit further with some additional tests. Um, wanted to raise the bar for the standard of the tests that were involved with the suite. Uh, found uh, some things about the way that the RDF graph was built that we wanted to fix. It's just sort of opened up a couple more loops. Uh, that we realize we want to close down, and um, and so uh, just just to make sure that that's all ready to go, um, I do need to devote a bit more time to it. I am I am hoping that the closing of this can be done in the course of sort of hack time, um, you know, that we all get together in, and I think that um, also broadening the pie, so other uh, broadening the the folks who can see it. I wanna I wanna I wanna demo what's there in alpha actually. Um, to folks, uh, you know, in, in London, I think it'll be helpful that other people see more of it. Uh, happy to go over with, you know, with you, Porig, to, so that you can see more about it too, so you kind of understand uh, a bit better about where it is. Um, but yeah, I um, I haven't been able to to yet get it uh, sanitized. I just want to make sure that we turn it over. You know, it's not going to start breaking things, and then people are going to, you know, it's going to be worse than what's there now. So um, it is it is in many ways it adds many new features. But as, as with anything where you're adding a lot, it also there's a few things that still need to be kind of polished up so that everything is cohesive. So, so that is uh, that is where it is. Um, yeah, thanks thanks for asking on it. I just yeah I hadn't updated because I haven't haven't uh, pushed it forward. But we will get it out. It will happen. Great. So we've got Great. joining. Yep. Okay. Thank you for keeping me honest about that. All right. So let's um, let's skip over. Uh, Giovanni's update uh, for now, and uh, yeah, actually, I guess that, uh, that uh, you're the next one, Porig, uh, on your stuff. Okay, um, so main thing I've been working on is um, uh, some more updates for uh, gap junctions. So <clears throat> again, uh, the issue with these is that they're an experimental branch of JLMs, and then there's a bunch of other experimental branches for NeuroML, which um, have minor modifications, but um, the core functionality of allowing uh, specification of uh, the gap junction or an electrical connection between two given uh, cells, where it listens for the member of potential on each end and puts a current into the uh, opposing cell based on uh, conductance and the difference in member of potential. So that mechanism is now present in lens, um, present in uh, neuromel. Um, so that you can create an element gap junction, give it a conductance, and then create an electrical connection between two specific points. But um, the process of getting all of that functionality drilled down to the development version, which is the uh, kind of current target version of NeuroML and Lens, uh, is just taking a little bit longer um, uh, because there are, uh, there's basically been six months of um, changes, independent changes, and Robert French. Uh, well, actually, there are changes in my branch, which and um, parallel changes in Robert's, which we just have to hammer together to make sure that everything in Lens works. Um, and um, when we bring it in, everything will still work for the rest of the normal matters. So it'll be another week or so, hopefully. Um, but you can, if, if it, there's a utility with JNormal, you switch easily between branches. Uh, so if you can get normal experimental, it'll switch all the branches to experimental. And you can run the example, so that mail I sent. Um, you can run the example in C302, uh, for example, and you can see some of them working with gap junctions. And um, uh, in theory, you can uh, use that package to create smaller networks and how to do individual gap junctions. Um, so it's progress in that respect. Um, one other small thing I've been doing over the last few days is expanding C302 
Uh, so at the moment, it has only new ones, um, but there are obviously um, about 90 zips, 95 90 zips muscle cells as well, and we know the connections between the neurons and the muscle cells. So I've just uh, expanded it to have an option of adding the muscles and connections. Um, so now, uh, within the same framework, you can create uh, the cells, the muscles, and there's also this initial um, parameter. So I've updated the uh, parameters from parameters A, which was just integrating fire cells, parameters B, which is integrating fire cells, gap junctions, and all, also this internal uh, property for its, um, just called activity, uh, which varies between 0 and 1 in individual cells. So the, idea, the basic idea here is that um, the cells, even though they're integrating fire, they're active, and this value varies between 0 and 1 with a slightly slower time frame, uh, so that when, it's, when a muscle is active, you can read out the value for that for maybe 0.9, and then feed that into a muscle, for example, in uh, cybernetic, and hopefully get some kind of uh, action going there, and um, uh, in some way control the uh, movement using that parameter. So that's kind of roughly analogous to maybe something like um, internal calcium. But again, this is all just very uh, a random bunch of parameters. But in theory, if um, the connectivity of the network um, and the um, synaptic uh, excitation inhibition is incorporated, then we should be able to get the network to do something along the lines of um, uh, oscillating a um, uh, uh, set of waves down the muscle cells, uh, which should get the worm to do something. So there's a lot of parameter tuning to be done, but um, this is the kind of all work towards getting that implemented. But That's again, huge. Yeah, so it needs a little bit of tuning, but um, I'm hoping between now and the uh, 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 worm meeting that I uh, can get some basic connectivity between um, cybernetic and C302. That's huge. That's huge. I wanted to go back to the gap junctions and just say again how cool it is. The way this worked basically is that you know a couple couple different folks came in from outside, not knowing about Neuromel, not knowing about LEMS, not really knowing about anything. Just volunteers came in. I'm talking about um, Ari Richmond and Abdullah Rashid. And we're like, hey, let's do some project. And then they wanted to get into, you know, social you know, social behaviors that cause us to look in the, you know, dig through the connectome, pull out this circuit. We looked at the circuit. We were like, hey, this circuit really relies a lot on gap junctions. That then triggered a conversation with, you know, with Porig for us to like expand that. That then triggered, you know, I think Porig and Robert and the Lems team to, you know, really get, uh, you know, you know, step up the support for gap junctions. And now we have it. And it's like. I don't know. I, I think this is just another one of those awesome open science stories where really, like, our progress is being driven by volunteer desires and volunteer efforts, and now we can now close that loop and get back to those folks and, and keep pushing that forward. So I just I just think it's another, like, case where things are really going well, and I, I just thank you very much again, Porig, for that. And, and of course, the cybernetic stuff is also really exciting, but I just also wanted to, to, to put another highlight on that. Um, so thank you for that. Okay. Great. Um, so uh, now I think uh, next updates uh, come from the movement validation team. Uh, Michael, do you want to give us that? Sure. Okay. So there's been quite a bit of stuff going on with movement validation these days. Um, we, uh, in particular, we have uh, Chris Barnes, who is from the Schaefer Lab itself, which is, of course, the place where we originally got our, our code. And um, he's just joined the Schaefer Lab. So anyway, he's interested in, in working on the project. And in fact, he's already made a couple of contributions um, with respect to the computer vision uh, piece. He's, he's expressed interest in working on that part of the project. Um, and in fact, we met with him on the 13th. Um, so about eight days ago now, I guess, and nine days ago, and we we were sort of debating whether we want to start from scratch with the computer vision code that translates the videos of the worms to a segmented um, um, HDF5 uh, data file, um, or whether we want to use the existing um, code that the Schaefer Lab wrote, and we basically concluded that there were a sufficient number of heuristics that have have built into the uh, the code that it was probably worth trying to do the port. Um, 
and not try to start from scratch. So Chris is taking that task on. And in fact, we if you remember, there was a, another person, uh, Aaron Lang from Australia, and he was working briefly on on the computer vision piece also in the summer. And now he's uh, reached out again and said that he's interested in continuing to work um, now that he is back from his semester of school, I guess. And so he'll um, hopefully work with uh, Chris Barnes on that. I kind of pointed them to each other. So so that piece it seems to be uh, having some momentum uh, on it. And as for the rest, um, we still haven't finished translating the statistics code, and that's on me. Uh, I've committed to doing that, and I'm sort of maybe 70% done at this point. So I'm working on that. The goal is to completely finish the port of the statistics code by um, the conference so that I can I can demo that. So that's, that's being worked on. And um, Jim is continuing to clean up the features code, um, making those kinds of edits and, and contributions there. Um, if he were here, I'm sure he'd have a lot more details to offer. I'm sorry I don't have every, every specific uh, detail of what he's working on, but I know that he's working on the features um, and making them completely line up with what the Schaefer Lab code is uh, calculating. So that's really what's happening with move validation. Great. Awesome. Oh, wait, uh, I have one more thing. With Miguel, yes, yes. if you remember, the Miguel yeah. from, from, he's a engineer from Intel in, uh, in Mexico, and um, my idea there was that we could do a uh, green hero session. This is like a pair programming. So I thought this might be something that, I don't know, if, if people in the rest of the project are figure, trying to figure out ways to uh, engage people and, and bring people on, um, I was thinking that this might be a really valuable tool because you're sitting right beside the other person virtually and you both have a cursor you can control. So it's like the ultimate, I guess, in pair programming uh, uh, methods. And maybe a couple of sessions with a new person, um, maybe that kind of does a Kickstarter kind of kind of thing and really gets them gets them going on, on some code base. So anyway, I was hoping to be able to do that with Miguel. We haven't quite connected on that uh, because of a firewall at his, at his office, but uh, I guess Intel doesn't want people using Screen Hero. But uh, hopefully uh, we'll figure that out soon. Anyway, that was a thought for uh, the rest of the project, too. I have heard of, I have heard of that, and, uh, but I've never used it or seen it used. Um, and it would be doubly valuable if you were to do that as an experiment and report back to us uh, how it went. Because I could see something like that potentially, yeah, being a really important collaboration tool um, to kind of get folks past the confusion of uh, you know what's uh, what's going on. Exactly. Yeah, and maybe even as an ongoing thing as well. I mean, I know that a lot of offices these days, a lot of companies are are pushing the pair programming uh, paradigm. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Um, Alrighty. So then. Oh, I actually did want to give uh, two more two more updates. Uh, sorry that I uh, that I forgot to give at the beginning. Um, one um, is that um, this last week I uh, I presented OpenWorm at a forum on open science in computational neuroscience, and at uh, ASU um, the slides are in the presentation uh, folder. Um, for some reason, I seem to have lost edit access on the document, or I would paste them in. I will paste them in as soon as I can retrieve that. I don't know why. I think I'm signed in on a different account or something. But uh, the slides are open as well, and this is just another uh, opportunity for me to say that, like, the way I do presentations for this project is that I create slides, I make them open. Well, usually I try in advance, but in, re in reality I often I'm making the presentation right up until I give it. But then the slides are there, and they're a public resource, and sometimes I even tweet the slides. Um, so folks can see them, but I want everyone, you know, on the project as well to have a look at the slides and just like give me feedback if you um, would like me to represent anything differently or better. Um, I'm trying hard to like provide credit and attribution uh, to everybody's work in there. I might overlook something at some point. Um, please do not in any way if, if you think that I'm slighting you by not including uh, your name or something in any of my slides. Please do not hesitate to drop me a polite email and suggest that I will that I should uh, change something because I'm happy to do that. 
Um, in some places, I have started to uh, replace um, credit to the um, uh, to our perspectives paper that just came out, um, which of course has many of us as authors, but not everybody's authors. Um, so in some way, just because I think it's good to encourage um, the academic, when I give talks to the academic community, to encourage them to cite uh, an actual academic article, because then that raises our citation count, and that's good for the project in general. Um, so there's a new thing there where I started to just like put that as like attribution on some slides, but um, I. You know these slides. There's no reason I I can add a whole list of names anywhere, uh, and I'm in no way opposed to that. So um, looks I like add... Rick Erkin uh, presented there too. I'm just looking at the agenda here. Yes, Rick did. Rick did present there as well, um, which is also why I had a chance to to connect with him. So um, anyway, uh, I'm going to get I'm going to get myself in the document during the next uh, update here and post those. But uh, those are available. Um, they are in the public. Google Drive as well, and anybody can can link and see all the presentations that I give on OpenWorm go into there. Um, and anybody's also welcome to reuse any of those slides if anybody ever wants to talk about OpenWorm on some other context. So, um, so okay, just FYI on that. The other update that I have relates to the Academy, which is um, which I wanted to say a thank you to Balash. Uh, well, also Porig. I don't know if I said that last time, but both, both Porig and Balash now have given guest lectures. Porig on NeuroML and Balash on his. Um, on his uh, sort of worm behavior work uh, in his, as a PhD candidate, which to some extent slightly introduced the, the worm behavior thing, uh, the movement validation thing as well for the students. So thank you to both of you for taking the time out to do that as well on, you know, in kind of the evening on a, on a GMT time. Um, and uh, I just gave the 11th out of 12 lectures uh, last, uh, this yesterday. And I will give the last one, um, it was scheduled to be next Tuesday, but I'm actually going to be away, so we're finding a new time for the final lecture. Um, but that will be completed, um, I guess, just before, um, you know, we have our London session. And that will, again, that will check the box and complete uh, one of the things we promised for our Kickstarter, uh, which is nice that uh, that's finally uh, moved on. Um, and, then, um, for all, and then in terms of everybody else getting to see that content, after the final lecture is done um, and we're... Um, there's also a lag with all the spectator content because we were like editing, editing the live content because some of it's just kind of like a waste of people's time if you're not like physically, uh, if you're not virtually in the hangout where it's being given. But all that content's getting edited so that it's kind of like made for everybody. And and I'll turn over all that content as well to the core contributors um, so that everybody can see it. I've already given some early access to to Porig and Michael um, so they've been able to have a look. Um, but. Uh, yeah, so anyway, um, I'm pretty happy with the way that the course has turned out. Uh, Miguel, who uh, Michael mentioned, has been kind of the most the most active student um, on there, and um, hopefully we can convince him to, to continue, uh, you know, making uh, contributions and sharing his thoughts with us uh, after the course is over. Um, and, uh, and the other students are also excellent. So, um, okay, I just wanted to give those two updates um, before we moved on, so... Uh, great. Let's um, see. Next on our list is Geppetto update, Matteo. Hello. Uh, okay. Um, boom, 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 boom. So I will start with um, some things that uh, I was working on and trying to update. So. One thing was the um, update to the latest version of uh, uh, NeuroML, which is actually the what's in the development branch. Uh, it's causing um, some headaches uh, just because there is uh, new features that are being used in in that bundle, and they're just causing uh, some some problems while integrating the for Porig, the two string that is now happening uh, during the sources generation. Uh, that wasn't there uh, in the past uh, in the past release, and it requires some additional dependency that uh, is not uh, that easy to bring in. And what string? Uh, you have a, you know in the generate source of the Maven um, uh, com file uh, where there is a one parameter. Uh, I don't want to get into the details, but there is one parameter which is injecting plugin. Uh, which is the NeuroML one, and then below that was added a two-string one, which adds generation of the two-string method to each one of the generated NeuroML class. That doesn't come for free. That comes with uh, uh, the burden of having a, a dependency that it's not explicit and trying to, uh, for everything, to 
figure out that that's a dependency that exists and that needs to be used and where to find it is taking me some time, but uh, I am working on that and on the um, J and updating JLAMS itself. So uh, JLAMS, I'm um, it's basically the API merged uh, branch that um, uh, that Pori created. But all of this to say that basically there are some new features that are are appearing in uh, both NeuroML and JLAMS. And uh, uh, in order for to use them in Geppetto, basically, we need to start updating the libraries. That's where this is really coming from. It's not yet about the experimental version of for the for the gap junctions because that is not yet stable. But eventually, that w the same thing will have to happen again to to bring that stuff in. Uh, just as um, this is not uh, fully working yet because I am not. Um, and this is not fully working yet because, uh, well, first of all, this is a, an older snapshot that doesn't have the gap junctions. And uh, uh, the, the version of NeuroML was not uh, up to date yet. But this is the social circuit, Stephen, that you were uh, asking about the last time. So uh, I started doing uh, some, some steps to integrate that so we can see, we can see the we can see the circuit here on the background, and then we have also properties from the circuit that uh, um, are being extracted. Like this is not the latest code that Hadron has. Uh, this is again a snapshot from last week or something like that. But uh, it's very cool that we're turning this stuff around now much faster. I mean, we went from I think to get C three hundred two in. I think it took a couple months. Now to get this one in, basically. We just yeah, and, and uh, it, it, like the the only reason why it wasn't instantaneous is that there are some features that uh, uh, are used by these that are in the newer version of NeuroML and JLens. Otherwise, it's like it would be as simple as just like opening a, a, a new file, and that's what it will be in the future. But obviously, when new stuff is added, uh, you have the you have to update the code. And uh, is this so one out on live yet? Is this one out on on uh, where mm, public, public folks can play with it? No, 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 no. This this is not because it requires the um, it requires the updated NeuroML libraries that I'm currently working on. Okay, That's but fine. it will be in the next release of Japan. So cool. So cool. Okay. And, uh, and you can see also that uh, uh, there are uh, stuff that it, there is stuff extracted from the NeuroML model that is now uh, starting to be visible. Again, this is not the latest, but we can see, for instance, the the synapses that are declared, uh, uh, and uh, you can see the different uh, uh, populations for uh, the different neurons. Again, this stuff is now moved uh, where it should be, which is down here. Again, this is an older snapshot, but just to give an idea. You see the parameters for the integrate and fire cell that um, the Porig is using, and you see the parameters for uh, each one of them. And uh, again, the tree still needs some. Um, uh, again, it, it's in development code, but uh, we're basically getting to a place that we can also look at the model uh, just um, um, just from the browser, basically, and we can see uh, what is there. And uh, then, so I will now uh, turn on to quickly updates from uh, everyone else that is uh, doing cool stuff in um, in Geppetto. So um, what we have, um, um, okay. So what we have is um, where is it? Okay. Uh, well, Joe, that is there, uh, will speak for himself. Uh, um, uh, Jesus is working on adding. Uh, um, uh, so the infrastructure for having connections in Geppetto is already there, and now is adding uh, um, functionality to visualize the connection and you know, being able to navigate them from the browser. That is going to be very cool. So we'll be able to navigate the, um, how the um, how the different uh, neurons are connected to each other. So what are the inputs? What are the outputs? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, Adrian is, uh, um, is 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 basically working on um, like finishing up with the with the neuronal population and uh, also working on the um, on the extractions of the um, of the connections. And uh, uh, I met with him uh, earlier today. Very cool. Very cool things. It's coming up nicely. The um, Matt that um, uh, helped me with the release this month <laughs> for Geppetto released the uh, version 0 0.1.8. And uh, uh, so that is what is running now on live.geppetto.org. Uh, there, uh, um, there is release notes. I 
like the, the release still has to be made official, but it's already there, basically. So if people want to have a peak preview, just go to lab.jpeco.org or um, look at the look at the master branch for the different repositories. The um, other work that is happening uh, from us is like uh, all the work with the worm sim and uh, um, basically having the separate components uh, uh, between the worm sim front end and and um, and Geppetto, and also working uh, uh, on a development uh, instance uh, where basically uh, the worm sim is uh, can be tested, and where the, we do actually have a running instance of uh, of worm sim that uh, is being updated as development advances. Uh, Boris is uh, um, working on the um, on the connectivity widget at the Geppetto meeting. Uh, he shown us something uh, very cool, although it's still independent from Geppetto, but it's a, a standalone prototype of uh, what kind of visualization we can have for the for the for the different networks. Uh, and uh, he had something for this social circuit uh, for the C elegance, and uh, he also had something for the C three o two. And uh, all of those are like, uh, as, as soon as we're finished with having basically the connections and the navigation that um, that we're working on, all of that will be able to converge and the widget uh, uh, for the for visualizing uh, connectivity will, will be able to be uh, to be implemented on the Geppetto side of things, and it, it's going to be it's going to be very useful. Um, so um, Sergey has been uh, has been helping out, uh, supporting um, Martin for the um, skeleton extraction that um, that is working on. So uh, basically, adding also the um, extracting the position for the muscle cell, so that also a skeleton um, for them can be computed. The same goes for the same goes for the mesh. And uh, we had a meeting uh, uh, last week with. Uh, also with Andre, we were uh, talking to Martin, trying uh, to answer all of these questions in terms of how the simulation, uh, how the simulation was uh, was working from a geometrical uh, point of view and a physical point of view. And uh, Andre and Sergey were very helpful uh, trying to um, get those answers. So that also moved um, moved forward. Uh, I think still undergoing the effort from uh, uh, Michael to extract the stuff from the. Um, for the um, basically requirements for the movement validation stuff. Then uh, uh, Kronikin is now working uh, on the, um, adding the muscle cell model to Geppetto. And uh, basically, that's the new ML muscle cell model that uh, like started being created a long time ago that uh, recently Reiner and uh, uh, Rainer and uh, Porig have worked on. And uh, uh, also, that uh, that's another reason uh, why I'm doing the update of the LAMS and NeuroML stuff, just because there is a, a <laughs> just because there is a, a new features that are being used that uh, that need to be there. But um, and he's also he's also found some other problems. He has fixed some of them, but it, it, it's progressing, and it's also going to be nice because it's like it's this other. Aspect that, that we uh, we were um, um, we were not yet representing in Japan, and that is a prerequisite for then starting to work on the integration between that muscle cell model and then the SPH model that we will be taking from Cybernetic. So uh, step by step, that is also uh, ongoing. And then for the first time, Kyle uh, mainly joined us from the University of Washington, and he's starting to. Uh, analyze uh, uh, integration of Librod Runner, which is a an SBML um, native uh, uh, native solder solver, uh, which apparently is the the fastest <laughs> OD solver for SBML that is um, that is out there. So is uh, is going to is a student at the, the third year and is starting to um, analyze how to integrate these uh, in Jupyter so that uh, we can have. Uh, that also available for crunching the numbers and doing the um, and doing the computation. Um, so we are in uh, spring 37 and uh, we'll be at it for the next two weeks. So uh, I, I expect that the next open world meeting uh, we should have something cool to show in terms of the visualization uh, for the for the networks. But that's all for now.
So that brings up one thing. By the way, very nice, uh, very nice update. Obviously, lots going on. <laughs> Again, it's awesome that like we have this uh, meetings within meetings and rolling up the contexts of what lots of folks are doing in sort of an, in this context, which is I think is is working out very well. Um, you mentioned the next meeting, and I was just looking ahead at the calendar. The next meeting. Um, is the London meeting, actually. It's right in the middle of the next London meeting. So um, just FYI, everybody, I'm just going to hit the cancel button on the, on the calendar event, um, but mm -hmm. uh, understand why that, that's happening. It's because we won't be meeting here in this hangout. We'll be doing it um, in person for all of us who are going to be getting together. So uh, FYI on that. Okay, great. Um, yes, um, that, that would be a nice target uh, like for the hacking session. Like uh, getting C three O two social to work and run, yes, and to work and run in Gepetto. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, I mailed uh, Dan Kronikin that is now working on the muscle cell model because he just moved to Cambridge from uh, Saint Petersburg. Awesome. So, uh, so he, um, he will see if he can take a, a day off, but that would be nice uh, if we could also work with him in parallel making sure that by the end of the retreat that we have C3O2 social the muscle cell working and that would be and like <laughs> if, if we had the gap junctions uh, working in Japan for C3O2 that would be really like <laughs> we couldn't ask for more so I'm sure we, we are all very motivated to get there definitely cool alright good stuff Looks like next on the agenda is Andre. You see him coming off mute. Or not. There we, next, go. Next there we go. Yep. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, during the last period, I spent really exciting times. Uh, first reading uh, documentation for Neuron software uh, for simulation of neuronal uh, objects. Uh, well, that was really nice read. Um, a lot of um, biological, neurobiological stuff. Uh, uh, together with uh, technical uh, details. Uh, very nice uh, conception of this uh, simulator. Um, so I tried a lot of uh, examples, um, running them in this environment, and so on. Uh, I think you remember the document uh, which I shared previous uh, meeting uh, about. Um, I put it in the chat. Um, uh, a lot of uh, various parameters describing uh, neurons, connections. Uh, Neuron properties like uh, resistances, capacitances, and so on. I made some calculations uh, for a specific case of Sierra neurons. So now um, I have tried uh, experimenting uh, with uh, my own examples um, using these parameters to uh, try to simulate. Uh, at least few uh, serial against neurons. Uh, I have chosen one long uh, dendrite, uh, about one millimeter long, to check check the possibility of uh, signal to propagate uh, for such uh, distance. Uh, so I have simulated two uh, different neurons. Uh, I have found a way to make one uh, chemical synapse between them and one uh, electric junction uh, using uh, these uh, specific par parameters which I have calculated uh, for Sierigans. Uh, well, uh, it was pretty nice to discover that uh, the signal can really pass uh, through this distance, uh, reach uh, the chemical synapse uh, pass through it uh, and uh, excite uh, the next uh, postsynaptic neuron. So it really works. Uh, now we have an experience of visualization, uh, injecting currents uh, through, uh, oh no, um, visual, visualization of 
voltages, currents, and so on. It works. It's wonderful. Uh, so I'm really quite excited about this, and uh, continue to. Uh, well, my plan was to simulate uh, mechanosensory uh, signal uh, propagation down the network, like AML uh, uh, neuron receives uh, touch stimul uh, well, uh, uh, from gentle touch of uh, front uh, part of warm body. And then it uh, passes through a number of other uh, neurons, uh, including those which um, are responsible for locomotion. So I plan to build this sub-network, small circuit, uh, cell by cell, uh, taking into account what is written in a number of papers uh, about this, about what is known. Um, and, well, I'm going to see how it will function. OK, uh, that sounds great, Andre. Um, uh, are you happy to share that in a GitHub repository, maybe, uh, so that um, I mean, anybody else can have a quick look at the neuron code and uh, some of their parameters. Oh, good idea. Uh, I think I would like to do it. Maybe I just need to c complete it. Maybe a few days to make it more, I don't know, better usability. <laughs> um, OK. Yeah, I mean, whenever you're com uh, comfortable with uh, releasing it, because it would be good to just be able to Look at it, and I mean, uh, anybody else who knows Neuron can just see if there's any any suggestions or anything, or or even just um, ask you about why you use certain parameters. So, yeah. Andre, oh, I, I will be I will I will be glad to do it and then to um, exchange our opinions. Maybe there will be some advices and so on. Andre, do you mind if I ask you a question also about this? Yes, sure. So um, uh, this might be a stupid question, but um, in the uh, spreadsheet that you've linked to here, um, a lot of these values, does it make sense to have this information be accessible through the Pi Open Worm common data interface? Like, is this is this, does that make sense that this information would ultimately be something you would obtain by some some query into Pi Open Worm? Sorry, uh, I'm not sure that I really understand. The I guess I'm saying that this information is, I guess, anatomical uh, information or you know parameter information about the uh, C elegans, and I'm just wondering if that's if if ultimately the the idea is maybe this is a question for Stephen. I don't know, but but ultimately is the idea to to put this information um, in a state that it's available through the Pi Open Worm common data access layer. Well, why not? I think it's a good idea if, if this <laughs> can be used with a purpose, uh, or, uh, if this can be helpful for anybody, uh, I will be glad. Makes sense. OK. So yeah, let, let me sort of speak to this. Um, you know, I, I think um, you know, Andre's purpose in collecting this and my purpose in, in creating Pi Open Worm are somewhat different purposes. The answer is still yes, that uh, this should go in there. But the reason that it's not like Andre's first priority is that Andre's first priority is making a model from this information. And that's all well and good. And really, what Andre should, should have been able to do is not to have to dig this up himself, but actually to have gotten it out of Pi Open Worm to begin with. But it isn't in there yet. Um, it will be. It will be now that we have this, and uh, we go just a little bit further to make the framework, uh, you know, able to do this. But exactly the same way that he's got facts here that are cited. Now we have the cap capability to do that in the alpha branch of Pi Open Worm, so that it, additionally other modelers are going to be able to benefit from the fact that he's done this research. So I would say, you know, at this point, it's not really yet uh, Andre's responsibility to put this back in because anyway, Pi Open Worm is, is still just kind of in a state of, of becoming, so it re can really accept this. But yes, ultimately, that should be there. So kind of like there's the modeler purpose that he has, and then my purpose is kind of more this librarian purpose, which speaks to kind of a bigger effort to make sure that uh, 
you know, we can generate models on the basis of changing these these numbers and these and these parameters. So, um, so this I, I think the thing here is just to make sure that we definitely flag this spreadsheet as something that's going to be on the pipeline to go into PyOpenWorm as the next as the next step. Um, but we'll probably do that after we we do this alpha to master release, just so we don't like uh, uh, tie those two things together and slow down PyOpenWorm coming out even even uh, more. But I, I think it's you're thinking exactly the right way in terms of integration across the project. Um, so um, we definitely need to. We should actually just actually let me just go make an issue right now, um, reminding myself that we should put that in there. Um, thank you for that. Yes, and, and sorry, uh, Andre, not trying to say that this is where it should have gone in the first place. Just, again, as Stephen says, like pointing to uh, where hopefully, ultimately, all this good work will, uh, will end up. So, awesome. Cool. Andre, do you want to say anything else about the, um, uh, the manuscript that we've been working on? Oh, uh, well... If, uh, I think we can decide that we have finished all the text and its uh, preparation to the correct format. Uh, now we're just discussing uh, the journal to send uh, to where to send it. Um, I have sent you a letter uh, with a number of journals from Elsevier uh, with quite various uh, names of these journals, are uh, all somehow related to biomechanics, uh, fluid, dynamics, simulation, biophysics, and so on. Uh, so you just need to, I think, to select one of them more uh, maximally appropriate for this. Yep. So and it is going to so, so just to, just one more comment on that. Just um, so this this is going in, everybody, and I want every, I want everybody to be clear on the on the authorship on this. I think I've, I've got my mind on this because we were just talking about this last week at the at the conference about about attribution. So several of you have, have provided some comments about the paper, and if you've provided comments on the paper, um, you've been added to the acknowledgments uh, section of the final text. Um, uh, when we have gone out and asked folks if folks want to be included as authors. Um, on this on this paper, like specifically folks like Mike Fellow, for example, he has said that he's happy just to be acknowledged, and he feels that what he's contributed to the to the manuscript does not does not uh, you know qualify him to be a, a co-author. I just want to say this out loud so everybody hears it, um, just because the last paper we sort of had a very broad authorship on the paper, also because it kind of represented the entire project as a whole, whereas this particular paper is just pretty much focusing on what Andre and Sergey have done with the PCI SPH engine. Um, but I'm saying it now because if anybody, if any, just so that nobody's surprised when the authorship line comes out, that folks are being acknowledged but not added as authors. If you feel some somehow strongly that you want to to be added as a co-author, um, have a have a conversation with us about it and let's talk about it. I think the general standard is that is that folks haven't um, you know gotten in and done a significant amount of writing, and so that's why we haven't um, added folks as co-authors. But I just don't want anybody to be upset like after the fact. Um, I think this is. I think everybody is cool, but um, since we're just about to hit send, basically, on the paper, I just want to say it one more time, um, so everybody can hear that. Okay. Cool. All right. So it looks like we're up for Giovanni, who has joined us. Hello, everyone. Sorry for joining late. Was it was engaged. So I'll just give my update. Um, I'll, uh, in terms of uh, stuff related to actual um, work uh, on code and things like that, the only thing I've uh, been able to put time in in the last couple of weeks was uh, to perform the WormSim use cases. WormSim is this uh, Worm in the Browser project that spawned out of the Kickstarter of success. And uh, that document is on the agenda linked. Anybody, everybody should have access to that. Um, also, I put a link last time to the waffle board. Uh, all the uh, issues that are tagged as Wormsim are um, uh, pretty, pretty much on the waffle board. So, if anybody wants to follow development of that particular area, just uh, uh, filter the waffle board for Wormsim, and there's a bunch of stuff that comes up. Um, so, 
that's pretty much about it in terms of uh, the update about the worms in. There's a number of other things going on. So another thing that happened today is that all the um, we had this initiative uh, as part of the Kickstarter to uh, adopt a new initiative. And today all the certificates and links to the um, to the names of the buckers and the new mail went out in emails. And I saw that people started tweeting that. If you go to the of Worm account, there's a tweet from a guy who receives a certificate, for example. So if you're curious about what that looks like. Just go onto the Open World Twitter and uh, check the stream. Um, we tweeted that from the Open World account. Um, so that's out. That's that's out. There is still um, some. I mean, there's, there's going to be a follow up on that as soon as the names of buckers. Uh, we can get them to show up in the um, C302 stuff. Uh, as soon as we do that, we can send a follow up and say. Uh, Hey, the, the metadata uh, associated to the, the new one you adopted is now showing up. Um, so this is how you see it in, this, in, the, in the actual working software. And then when the worm thing goes out, that's going to be part of that too. Steven is sharing the certificate um, if you're curious what that looks like. Um, that's what it looks like. Yeah. That's what it looks like when a happy, a happy contributor now knows that they own a, uh, a given cell, or they've yeah. adopted it. Yeah. We still have uh, loads of cells. Um, no, no, I mean, I think we had uh, around 100 uh, new neurons adopted. So then, then lives another 200 that maybe uh, in the future we can think about some other cool initiative we we'll kind of bring some of the product uh, and, and a bunch of emails. But maybe we can think of some other cool initiatives to um, find um, parents for the rest of the news who are orphan. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much about it for for that. The other big news, uh, which we announced already last week, but it's not been posted to the social media yet, is the retreat, uh, the open World retreat. It's the second time we meet in person, everybody in the project at once. Um, and it's happening from the 4th to the 6th of November in London, UCL. Corrick is uh, being uh, very graceful and helping with the organization and being the local host at UCL. Uh, so thanks for that. There's an agenda that we drafted and it's linked to the notes. Uh, the attendance is by invitation. The first day is going to be like core members only. And then uh, the rest of the meeting, so the following two days, is going to be uh, all the contributors, people who are kind of uh, um, uh, attracted uh, to the project or have contributed in the past can, can join in by invitation. Um, so if you're a contributor, you're automatically invited uh, to those dates. Uh, and uh, we will send out uh, things in the social media to uh, make it clear and make it more official. And this is all happening uh, this week because it's two weeks to the retreat. And um, we we'll pretty much get doing this stuff as we speak. Um, the one thing to say, uh, we did create a public e uh, event on Google Plus for the public presentation. That's going to be this map on the last day. So the last day is structured in a way that um, the first half of the of the of the day is just the same as the others when we do some marking all together. But then the afternoon session, uh, uh, and this was. Uh, Proposed by Forex and, and we implemented it. Uh, it's a very good suggestion. So there's going to be a public presentation. I'm sharing my screen. A public presentation um, Stephen is going to give <laughs> if he's able to do that because we always assume that Stephen is giving the presentations. Uh, but yeah, um, so that's going to happen at 1 p.m. And uh, it's going to be in the, in the lecture hall at uh, UCL. All the details are on the event itself. And if you expand, uh, it also does a description of the event. Um, so we're going to aggressively uh, push this on social media uh, in the coming weeks to make aware as much people as you can. Um, but yeah, so pretty much this start, uh, the, the, entire evening, the, entire evening, the entire afternoon and evening um, of the 6th, we're going to have this presentation right after lunch. And uh, and then after the presentation, there's going to be a Q&A session. I think it's another 
two hours after that we have the room for. Um, so we, we have the presentation and then everybody, uh, it's a public presentation, so everybody is in London is in, uh, interested can drop in. And uh, after that there's going to be a, a freely kind of open discussion and questions and all uh, the members of the project are going to be there. So um, it's going to be just a, an interesting um, forum for people to discuss. And hopefully uh, we get a bunch of uh, sea elegance biologists and get a lot of that feedback that uh, we, uh, we are eager to get. And sometimes it's difficult to connect um, because it's uh, Cross disciplinary sometimes it's, it's hard to get their attention, but that, that's a perfect uh, forum, I guess. And um, I believe for just circulating that to a lot of those folks. Yeah, I mean, if you do know any specific labs in the London or even the Cambridge Oxford area that uh, you want to particularly target, that yeah, it's um, probably good to um, send them sooner rather than later. If they're outside, uh, are you outside reaching out to those also in UCL, as you said? Um, in, in those emails we were exchanging. Sorry, what did you say? Uh, are you uh, reaching out to folks within UCL for it? Um, uh, I've sent it to a few uh, general uh, neuro, um, neuroscience and uh, computer science slash computational biology mailing lists, but um, not any specific labs yet. Okay, okay. I think uh, we have a check-in Friday morning to discuss some other stuff. Maybe we can coordinate on that. Yeah, well. there was the Porek, there was the you remember Arancha Barrios in UCL. We should reach out to her. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So yeah, that's very much everything from me. Uh, exciting stuff. I'm looking forward to see everybody. And also uh, something I didn't say is, and we didn't create a public uh, event on Duo Plus yet for that, but. Uh, the night of the fifth of November, we're doing a um, kind of meetup with anybody who wants to join from uh, the public in a pub. And we're still left to the finally put the name on the location. We have a few options uh, floating around. Uh, hopefully, by this week, we have everything straightened out and we can advertise that too. But yeah, definitely keep it in, on your calendar in, in the London area or around. The night of the fifth, uh, there's gonna be a meetup for drinks and things like that. And anybody, yeah, we did it last year, and loads of people showed up. So maybe we can do it again. It's gonna be a fun night. Um, yeah. So that's uh, that's pretty much everything. Yeah. Don't come dressed like guy folks, or we'll get arrested. Well, <laughs> and here I had my costume all packed. <laughs> The fifth of November. Bump in the Parliament. <laughs> we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna give it a new meeting. <laughs> there's a lot of bunch of stickers and guy folks masks and uh, dress up like V for uh, open worm or something. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Well, any other updates? I uh, know. Uh, that's that's all for a minute. Uh, that's all. Okay. Happily, the sun has moved behind a beam, and so I am now shrouded in shadow, where I was instead being burned by the sun. So um, apologies if I'm a bit darker here. OK, um, we, have a, we seem to have gotten through folks uh, fairly well today. I think we had a little bit less attendance than normal. Uh, did anybody want to bring up anything for the general good of the order before we close? OK. Then uh, let me just make a, just a brief comment as I'm com coming to the end of you know talking about Open Worm you know quite a bit more in the context of this uh, Open Science Meetup, um, uh, this this Open Science Conference rather that was organized at uh, Arizona State University last week, and also um, just in the interactions with the students who were sort of learning about you know the approaches to simulating biology and whatnot. That um, I'm as excited as ever about this project. Um, I am, again, deeply grateful to get to work with each and every one of you and every and everybody else that I get to interact with who comes into the project curious about this. Um, the energy just kind of keeps going up and up. Uh, one of the slides that I presented from uh, at this meeting, something I hadn't seen before, is I I took the um, the the measure of how many uh, people have been volunteering 
for the project um, over time. And I took that data from, we have this Google form where folks come in and when we they say, hey, I want to help, how can I do that? I sort of ask them just like tell us a bit about themselves um, before you know I have them, an interview with them or pass them on to one of you. Um, and just charting over time, the way that this sort of thing has increased, it sort of started with you know, those of us who just began at the very beginning right, in like 2011, and it was like very flat, and I did this cumulative graph. And then after December, when we posted, when Mike basically posted that, um, that video of the crawling worm, it just like shoots up in this like straight line of folks that have been coming in you know, from the outside world, just more and more curious about it. And I, I, I like this because you know, we, we have a lot of conversations you know, amongst the core team, and, and, and that's great. Um, but what I like about that is just that everybody who comes in and is motivated to click and say and find out how they can help uh, this project um, just, I think, continues to legitimize like the interest in it and the approach and the excitement uh, that folks have around starting here um, with uh, with digital simulation. And I got some of that feedback as well from the academic community that I saw um, at ASU uh, last week, just kind of reminding us that we really have something here that's special. Um, I think it it never hurts to remind ourselves as we've been in it for a while that um, we really have a unique uh, energy, and that's and that's. It's only driven by each and every one of us and uh, the time that we're willing to dedicate to this and we're willing to put forward. So you know, going into uh, you know, our meeting in London, but also in everything that we do in all our interactions you know, um, online, through email, to reaching out, carrying the message, um, helping other people uh, learn more about this space, no matter what background they come from, um, I think we're really ha- continuing to have an impact um, on, on this space and, and people really are taking notice. So just... Um, you know, I want to take another opportunity to thank all of you um, for all of your dedication and uh, and and you know care in this in this project. I'm just so excited and honored. It's my favorite thing that I get to do is to is to help move this forward. So, thank you again, guys. Likewise. Yeah, likewise. Cool. All right. Well, we'll break there, and uh, so no no virtual meeting next week, but or in two weeks, but uh, we'll pick it up in a month uh, then at the same uh, Wednesday time uh, that we have it. Okay, have good days and evenings, everyone, whatever time zone you're in, and uh, see you all pretty soon. Thanks. 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 Thanks.